Hello, everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 15, where it is written, After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up to the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. He looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him. Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? And so that he said this to test him, for he himself knew what, was go what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. What are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, and they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus sets a pattern. He takes nothing. Five loaves, two fish, and feeds a crowd of 5,000 men. Count the families, it's probably well over 20,000. And there's left over. How is that possible if Jesus is not God? It's not. The end. And there's a pattern here. In our liturgy, we celebrate the Eucharist. Our Lord's very flesh and blood comes to us. What are we? No, just average everyday people. We're not going to change the world, can we? Or for that matter, the last uh, supper of the disciples, 12 people, nobodies, they can't change the world. By themselves, no, they can't. By ourselves, no, we can't. Then Jesus Christ shows up. He takes what little we have, us, and he makes us his church. He claims us in baptism. He claims us in confession and absolution we're forgiven. And he claims us in his body and blood that we eat and we drink. And we are not just people anymore. We are now the children of God. Joining Jesus and reclaiming this creation for him. This is not originally from us. It's from him. It's a gift. And we see Jesus can take anything, no matter how battered, how beaten, how broken, and make them his child, make them his servant, and work a good out of it. So we see there is hope. While it is a sick world, why bad things do happen, nothing, no person, is truly beyond the redemptive love of God and Jesus Christ. Once it's beyond our love, beyond our reach, doesn't mean it's all, all hope is lost. There's the Almighty God who took the loud mouth and the betrayer Peter and made him the leader of the apostles. He takes the nobodies in the world, makes them his children to be his servants in the world. No one's beyond his love. So be of good cheer. God loves all people, wants all people to be saved, and he wants the world to be restored. By his body and blood, that's what he accomplishes. Sin's forgiven, new world's coming. Let us close with prayer. Lord, embolden us by your Holy Spirit, by your flesh and blood, to be your hands and feet in the world, to teach, to reach all people, so they may repent, sin's forgiven, and may be your children as well. Guide us, Lord, in this always. Amen.